Genevieve's talk, The Day I Lost My Face, reveals how individuals are affected by the media. Please welcome to the stage, Genevieve Fricker. Hi. Oh my God. I have a face mic. I feel like Britney Spears. This is great. Um, thank you so much for coming out and uh, coming to TED Talks and sharing some of your ideas. They're all so inspiring. Um, that guy's wearing a pirate hat. So this has been a pretty huge day for us all, I think. Um, my name is Genevieve Fricker, and uh, I am a comedian and writer, like James was saying. And uh, I don't have any slides, I'm afraid. I'm just going to talk to you. Um, I'm kind of a little hesitant to be here because I feel like TED Talks, the spirit of TED Talks, are um, about celebrating really great ideas. And historically, I have awful ideas. So, uh, like, I'll give you an example. Um, when I was younger, I decided with my brother that we should play a game of Space Jam based on the movie Space Jam. And um, I don't know if you guys know, like maybe some of you are a bit too young for it, but Space Jam is a movie about a basketball game set in space uh, that's played by aliens and Michael Jordan. And it's unfortunate because we were gonna play it in a room on Earth bound by the laws of gravity. So what I'm trying to say is I inadvertently broke my brother's nose. Yeah? So this is kind of the level of idea that I'm bringing to the table. But um, I hope you guys don't mind too much. Um, everyone's noses are intact so far, right? <laughs> okay, good. Um, a little over a year ago, I was preparing a solo uh, stand-up comedy show for the Sydney Fringe Festival. It was the first time I had ever self-produced a show, uh, self-directed, self-written, and performing by myself. And um, I'm a naturally anxious person, and so I was freaking out. Um, I didn't know if I was any good. I didn't know if anyone would come. I didn't know if even my friends would come. And I was kind of heaped on this by myself. And it was kind of a struggle for me. Um, this, uh, while this was all going on, I was asked by a local community paper um, to appear on the cover of their Fringe Festival special. Um, it's kind of publicity for the show. Um, and it's part of my like local community representation thing. And um, it was cool, like I went along, I did the shoot with another Sydney theater maker, Annabelle McMillan, and we had fun and then it was done and we'd see it in a couple of weeks, like around the show. And um, we didn't really think about it. I told my friends about it, I told them to look out for it, but I went back to my like little bubble of like self-doubt and despair. A few weeks later, I got a text from one of my friends that I told about. Um, three letters and a picture. Three letters, WTF. And the picture was the picture we took, but it didn't look like it was on the front page of the magazine. It was actually in a section called Hot or Not. They had taken our picture and then gotten random guys from around the neighborhood to rate us and how we looked um, out of five kisses. Uh, Julius says, where is he? <laughs> Julius says, I can leave my beer goggles at home for these two, and gave us a rating out of four and a half kisses. Another guy said, I'll definitely be waiting in the front row with three drinks, four kisses, which I'm sure he, saw, he thought sounded way less murdery in his own head. <laughs> and I remember reading this and feeling nothing, actually. I, I started shaking. I didn't really know why this had happened, and I instantly assumed it was my fault, that maybe I had given them some kind of indication that this would be okay, that they could take my work, my image, and use it to effectively catcall me. Because this is what this was. This is a print equivalent. Like, the publicity I got out of this was the equivalent of if I had stood around a dodgy bus stop for too long, you know? Um, so I was super mad, and I did what any of us, our generation, would do when they're super mad about something, I got on Facebook and Twitter and bitched about it. Um, and it started catching on. People that I knew, people I didn't know, famous people started kind of retweeting, replying, emailing this magazine and saying how it was not okay to do that. They had taken two young women who were just trying to make something and like perverted that. It was really kind of gross. Um, 
And this whole time, I was just kind of shaking and not really knowing what to do. I told my mother about it, and she said, well, you know, don't make a fuss, just take the compliment. I mean, they didn't say you were horrendously ugly. So, um, and I didn't, I mean, bless my mother, she has the best intentions, but I didn't really see it as a compliment. I saw it as someone taking that struggle that I think a lot of creative, like passionate people have every time they create something, the self-doubt and, uh, you know, the effort, they took that, they belittled it and they turned it into something kind of gross. Um, sorry. It got picked up by the Sydney Morning Herald. At that stage, um, the kind of story evolved enough that the publisher was shamed into pulling it down. Um, a week later, they printed an apology in the world's tiniest font next to a large column about social media lynch mobs. Uh, it was very classy. Uh, and that was it. That was the end of it. That was a year ago. That's all that happened with that. Um, and I still get people who come up to me today and they say, oh, you're the hot or not girl. That's how they know me is because I was the face of something kind of creepy and gross, um, which is no different from usual, really, but, like, there's something kind of finite to pinpoint on it. But... um. In the past year, I've kind of thought about it a lot and kind of becoming known as this person has kind of made me more bold to talk about it, I guess, to kind of call out whatever that was, whatever that decision these people made to, to belittle me. Um, like comedy is my life. Comedy is how I pay the rent. Comedy is how I meet people. Comedy is how I work things out. And I love comedy because I think it is one of the most inclusive art forms we have. It doesn't matter where you are in Australia, there's always a comedy night. It doesn't matter who you are, you're welcome to get up on stage and talk about whatever you want. Um, and I think that's wonderful. But there's not a single day that goes past that I am not made aware of my otherness in that. The fact that I am not a white guy in a plaid shirt, like... And every day I'm kind of made to feel like that. And it's, it's in how I get wolf whistled when I get on stage. It's in how older comics will tell me as if it's no big deal that actually that was really funny or actually I'd have sex with you or actually let me give you some advice as if it's like giving someone a, like a high five. I was going to say something rude and I didn't. Good. <laughs> and... And this is kind of this constant otherness that I feel has kind of made me feel bolder about calling out misogyny when I see it because, I mean, people already know me like that, I guess. Um, but it's awkward. I know that a lot of people, a lot of young women feel awkward about this because they don't want to be known as the girl who cried misogyny, as Lena Dunham puts it. They don't want to make people feel awkward. They don't want to cause a fuss because it's how we're conditioned. We don't want to make trouble for anyone. But I think the lesson that I've kind of learned from this past year is that you're not making a fuss, you're protecting your work. And your work isn't just your final product. Your work is the nights you spent dreaming up of the concept, the days you spent practicing, the times when you thought that you would give up because you weren't good enough and the times when you didn't and you kept going. I, I think that letting people disrespect that just because is cowardly and I think that if we all kind of joined in and started calling people out on that, it would it'd make people more courageous and stop making people feel like they're on the outside of something. So... Protect your work. It's the hours that you didn't spend with your friends and family. It's the hours you didn't get a proper night's sleep or you didn't clean your house or you didn't feed your dog. And you shouldn't be letting someone else shrink that or disrespect that and make you feel small just because you didn't want to hassle them. Your work is worth more than that. And when you protect your work, you protect your time, hopefully we can protect each other.
Um, the other lesson I learned is don't try and play Space Jam because that is just a game for aliens and Michael Jordan. Thank you. <laughs>